Dave looking for Greenwood. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Hand off. Turbin trying to get to the corner. Not going to be able to do it. The Ram defense gets the stop. Welcome to the Ram Report with Steve Fairchild. Looking at a fire deep, has a man wide open. It's Kaufman out at the 30 yard line. He makes a diving catch. Well, it's time to talk some Colorado State athletics. And of course, that's what we do right here on the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild. I'm your host, Brian Roth, of course, joined by the coach. Colorado State coming off a loss this past week, a 45 21 setback to Air Force. And Steve, as you go back and, and look at that game, I know the one quarter that's probably still in your mind is that second quarter. That was the difference. Yeah, it got away from there, us there in the second quarter. Um, you know, we did not win the turnover battle. And anytime you play a team like Air Force, you cannot turn the football over because you. You give them too many opportunities and they can shoot too much clock and we didn't do a good enough job defending the pass. We knew that going in that, uh, you know, they're a run football team, but they hurt you throwing it and they, they hurt us quite a bit there. So, uh, but other than that, I thought we played a physical game. I thought Chris Wolke got rolling. Uh, there were some good things as well. Yep, the Rams are trying to keep the Falcons from going bowling at CSU got off to a quick start. <laughs> First quarter of play, we have no score. Air Force, though, on the move. They'll run the option. Jefferson kept himself off the football. Loose on the field. CSU says they have it, and they do. They fake, thrown out to the near side, wide open. Jake Levin adds it to 30, to the 25, near sideline to the 20. Cut a field at the 15, to the 10. Inside the 5, to the 4. First down and goal, CSU. I set behind Grayson, wants to pass. Fade into the end zone, up on top. It's a touchdown to Byron Steele, and CSU will strike first. The Ram 33-yard line, Clark the man in motion, out of pass. Jefferson in the pocket, fires deep into the end zone. It is caught, touchdown, Air Force, Zach Kalf. Air Force showing blitz, here they come. Grayson now going to run with it, all sorts of room, 40-45. Has it at midfield, Grayson cut it to the outside, took on a tackler at the 45. He lost the football. And the Air Force Falcons have recovered it. Jefferson again to throw, going to fire down the middle of the field deep. Caught it to 10, to the 5, touchdown. It's Zach Kalt again. Again back to the air for Jefferson. It was a nightmare of a quarter, easily the worst quarter I think that CSU has put together so far this season. I think you have to give Air Force and Troy Calhoun, that coaching staff, a lot of credit. They made adjustments on both sides of the football. 31-0 in one quarter. Football to 36-yard line. Grayson again get a hand, Dom straight up the middle, Woke has a big goal to 40, got a field at the 45, into midfield, 45-40, draggling tacklers inside the 35. Second down and five, CSU from the 38, Woke straight up the middle, big goal, first down and more, broke a tackle, midfield, he's off to the races to the 30, Woke to the 20, Woke to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, Chris Woke. And there's the big play Colorado State was looking for, 62-yard touchdown run. Well, again, the final score, that one 45 to 21, the 31 point out for second quarter. It, again, that was a difference in the game, but but most of those yards and points, they, they came on pass plays. Does that surprise you at all? Well, it's what they've been doing to us for a few years. You know, you just, uh, you know, they're a run football team, very productive on the ground, and you, you start peeking a little bit in the secondary and not reading your keys and you allow them to get in behind you, which we did a number of times. So uh, give them their credit, though. Tim Jefferson's a really good quarterback he not only runs the football but he can throw it when you when you come up too fast on the run he's hurt us that way Matt, i know you guys uh, still had your chances you know down 31 7 late in that first half boy you're right on the doorstep you know you're going to get the football to open up the second half you go in and score there and you have an opportunity to make that a 10 point game early in the third yeah you, you know you look back we we had an op opportunity in the red zone at the end of the first half and then our first drive in the second half we went right down didn't get any points on either one of those and uh, you know, Air Force is too good a football team to not uh, be able to match them score for score. So uh, that was probably the difference in the game as well. Yeah, Chris Woke was fantastic. Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Week set a new Hughes Stadium rushing record. 269 rushing yards in that game. Uh, Chris Woke just continues to get better. He is, you know, and, and as the season goes on, he's getting in a better groove. We're, we're starting to give him more carries. Uh, he had 29 carries against Air Force. That's kind of the high end of the, 
spectrum for a running back, but uh, you average over nine yards a carry. He's been doing some very, very special things this season. Yep, no question about that. Meanwhile, Garrett Grayson making his second start. Uh, he only threw the football 13 times. I know that was by design. Your thoughts on his performance? Well, probably not as good as at U or at uh, TCU. You know, we we, we kind of bailed out of the pocket a few times early and uh, gave up some throws. But you know, Garrett's a young kid, very talented. Uh, he's a true freshman. I think every time he plays, he's going to continue to get better. Uh, and like you said, we were by design, we were going to run the football. Yeah, and of course, he showed off his legs too as well. I know you probably tell him at practice here this week that after a big game, go ahead and get down. He doesn't need to take on a safety. No, you don't <laughs> want to take on hits. And, and, you know, Air Force, we had talked about it all week. Air Force does a nice job of tackling the football. And if, if you're not uh, in a situation where you're the ball carrier going to the ground, uh, the second, third guy in there is going to rip that ball out, and that happened once to him. But again, young kid, he'll learn. I'm really pleased with what Garrett's doing. Again, Air Force gets the win over Colorado State. Coming up here on the Ram Report, we'll take you inside that Colorado State locker room. Stay with us. Up here, there's something that makes the remarkable an inspirational thing. Taking our work with this out of the lab and putting it into these all over the world. Chasing tornadoes from the shadow of the Rockies. A special sensitivity that revolutionized an industry. All of this in a great Colorado town. It's an exciting place to live and learn! <laughs> Colorado State University. Inspiration happens on higher ground. Twitter is great. Here's one. That darn cat is in the tree again. Where's a seven-footer when I need one? Here, kitty kitty, come on. Heard you looking for a seven-footer. Wow, Coach Miles, this is crazy. I just tweeted that. Trevor, you got this? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's more of a dog guy. This ought to do the trick. OK, thanks. That's what we're here for. Go Rams. Welcome back here on the Ram Report with head coach Steve Fairchild as we continue to talk Colorado State Ram football. Again, the Falcons, they get the win over the Rams on Saturday. And of course, it was a disappointed Ram locker room, but certainly there was no doubt who the star of the game was. It was running back Chris Woke. Grayson again get a hand, Dom straight up the middle, Woke has a big hole to 40, cut a field to 45, into midfield, 45-40, draggling tacklers. I think it's just great that they you know, created such a great hole. Getting a thousand yards is a big success, but you know it's a team effort, and I couldn't do it alone. You know, it was good. It was good part on all of us, but we definitely wish we could have that. Treading the defense again. You know, I'm I'm really happy for Chris. Uh, you know, you take small victories. You know, when you can't get a big one. So I'm really happy for him. I was that was one of my goals is to get him a thousand yards, and that's I'm really happy for him. He earned that. He's a really tough runner. I'm really happy that he got that today. From the shotgun, here's Grayson. Grayson on design run, running towards the right side. We'll cut up. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously, we first quarter that first drive, you know, we were clicking on all cylinders. We felt like, you know, if we get it by 14, our game plan was to get it by 14. You know, we knew that would change their offensive approach, make them more of a passing offense. And, you know, obviously, they came out firing and passing. You know, we didn't expect that. The air for Jefferson looking for it all. Has a wide open man. Zach Kalt at the 10. Has to wait for it. Count it to five. And he's into the end zone for a touchdown. You know, they're going to get that. Just go keep playing. Just make them earn things. That, that was our whole plan was to make them earn it. And obviously in the second quarter, when they throw the ball over your head three times, you don't make them earn anything. Oh, it, it was hard to tell hard to swallow because we came out doing so good in the first quarter. We knew that that was our potential. We was capable of holding them to 7 points, 0 points. But to see the second quarter coming, they just poured it in on us like that. It just was uh, disheartening. Has it up across the 40, broke the tackle to 45, and has it all the way out to midfield. Obviously, you know, we're losing. It's pretty pretty bad, and we don't want to be a losing team. And, you know, the struggle is, you know, we got to keep our heads up and keep the team motivated and keep going in the right direction. You know, we're playing together, practicing hard. We're doing everything that we can do to be successful. It's just, you know, we just got to put all cylinders rolling and try to get this W. So. Deeds will take one final knee, and that'll probably be the last play. Well, Steve, I know it's always tough when you lose to your rival. Still have the one game to go here with Wyoming. What'd you talk to the kids about in the locker room? Well, just staying together, which they have all year. You know, it's been a been a great team to be around. I think they genuinely care about each other. Uh, they practiced well all year. They played hard, and I'm quite certain we'll do that this weekend again. 
Again, that was the 50th meeting between the Rams and the Falcons. And up next, another one of those rivalry matchups as Colorado State and Wyoming get set to play for the bronze boot. And the two teams will meet up for the 103rd time. Has a big hole. He's inside the 10 to the five. The friendly is in, and the Rams extend the lead to 29 to 14. The rivalry with Wyoming is has always been a tremendous one. I mean, you can go back to Fum Song. You can go back years and years, and you'll find uh, references to, to the, that rivalry with Wyoming. The ROTC connections of running back and forth, uh, the exchange of the boot, the traditionally being the last game of the season. The bronze boot itself is the size eight Corcoran parachute jump boot that was worn in Vietnam. Wyoming, you had to win that game. That was a big game. I think, and I just say, I, uh, someone just told me this year, I think we played them 15 times. We won 11 of those games, and they and they were all pretty close games. But it's a, yeah, it's a big. You got to beat Wyoming to at least keep the fans happy for a week. Corey Bramlett back to throw. Fires down the middle, picked off, intercepted by the Rams. Luke Atkins. That's a game that you have to win. And that's a game that. Uh, is important and, and it's important for the University of Wyoming and there's a lot of players from the state of Colorado on both teams at that time. This game's got a lot of heritage. You know there's been been good games by both teams. It's uh, it's quite a rivalry and I know it's important to you know their university and their community and it's very important down here obviously. Cecil Sapp at the 15, he's at 10, on his feet, at the 5, at the 4, the 3, Cecil Sapp! Oh that dog is grown again! I've, I've heard players, I've heard former players and alums say this, if there's one game that we remember that we really want to take with us, it's that Wyoming victory. Again, the Rams and Pokes coming up at noon on Saturday. And Steve, this has been a great rivalry. I know you've uh, had a lot of experience in it. Yeah, as a player, I remember uh, coming down through the stands uh, with Sark Arslanian and getting in the big brawl. But, uh, you know, and as a coach, there's been some good memories. It, it's a good rivalry. I mean, it's uh, it's not only important to the communities, but uh, the universities and a lot of alums. So it's been, you can tell it's an important game for both sides. Hey, good to have it on the last game of the season. Yeah, I like having it there. It's yeah. kind of, it seems like a nice place to have your, your biggest rivalry. Yeah, they've won seven games this year. What has been the key to their success? I think they're playing good defense. Uh, you know, they're not turning the ball over. They're winning some close games. You know, Dave's done a good job. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to this, so this is a good chance for us to go out on the right they, note. They have a pretty good quarterback, too. I've been impressed by their true freshman, Brett Smith. Yeah, he's a kind of a dual-threat guy. He can throw a little bit. They spread you out, and then also he can run the ball. Yep. All right, so, well, we're going to move away from Wyoming, and when we come back, we're going to be joined by one of the fine professors here at Colorado State. You know, we've done it a few times here this year. I think it's a great segment, but Bill Schuster is going to join us up Yeah, next. you know, Bill's been a friend of the athletic department for a long time and worked with a lot of our players. I, I've really gotten to know Bill uh, better lately. He's actually uh, mentoring my daughter, Jill, who's going to graduate this semester, and I know he's... Uh, She's in a better place for having been around him. Yeah, well, it's my first time meeting Bill. Looking forward to it. I know you will, too. Stay with us, Bill Schuster from the College of Business. Coming up next right here on the Ram Report. Twitter's great. Here's one. The Rams won, and I got my painted stuff on TV last night. The bad news, this stuff ain't coming off, and I've got a job interview. Are you Big Rammy? Yeah, that's me. You got a job interview today? Yeah, I got to be there in an hour and I can't get this paint off. That's why we're here. Let's go, guys. Smile. Look them right in the eye. You got this. You can do it. Go get them. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-three thousand CSU Ram alums call Denver home. Now it's easier for Denver Ram fans to stay connected with CSU. Visit the all-new Colorado State University Denver Center, where all Ram alums will feel at home. You can make professional connections, enjoy events with other alumni. You can even show your Ram pride with all the best CSU fan gear. Stay connected with CSU. Visit us at 17th and Glen Arm or online at rams5280.colostate.edu.